Well, thank you for joining me today. This is Rivka with Treasures of Glory. This is prayer team episode number 34. And this episode is titled, The Goodness and Justice of the Lord in the Land of the Living. And this all ties into what we've been talking about since episode one on satanic ritual abuse, why we need to know about this with the theme tying together of it's about the children. This is a live recording of the prayer call on Thursday, January 14th, 2021. So with all that's been going on with the elections and the FRAUD and all of that stuff going on, I just felt a prompting of the Holy Spirit to give a message on a spiritual warfare from an aspect that gives hope. The last several weeks we've been working on from the aspect of knowing your enemy. And well, today I want to talk about um, overcoming evil with good, looking at goodness and justice and how that works together and how we can continue to be encouraged and of good faith or a good courage and to continue to have faith that the process is going to come out um, with victory in the end and the importance of justice also in light of everything with the, um, the indictments and the draining of the swamp. Everything is all part of the plan and I want to talk about God's um, justice and his goodness in this. So if you would like to receive emails about our prayer team, the link is in this description box below. So let me open us up in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. We come and we praise you and we give you glory. We speak the blood of Yeshua Jesus over our households, bank accounts, businesses, ministries, and everything under our stewardship. We plead the blood of Yeshua Jesus over President Trump, his family, and all those who are appointed to govern alongside him in the name of Jesus. We pray and put on the full armor of God, which is the belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, feet fitted with the operation of the with the feet fitted with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith that extinguishes the flaming darts of the wicked one, taking up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit taking up the garments of vengeance and the cloak of zeal, having the Lord as our shield and the glory of the Lord as our rear guard. We pray that every curse, hex, vex, spell, incantation, form of witchcraft, voodoo, dark art, or other form of weaponized demonic activity, or reverse and send against the heads of the sender sevenfold, that they would know that Yeshua Jesus is Lord. We declare that every human spirit, hybrid spirit, demonic spirit, synthetic spirit, AI or spirit child on assignment to create distraction and confusion or the triggering of bombs, booby traps, tripwires, or other types of programming are now discovered and bound in chains and fetters of iron and put wherever the true Lord Jesus Christ sends them. We thank you that there is martial law instituted on all parts of those listening on their humanity attempting to go out of body and engage in astral traffic and trade that is ungodly and unauthorized. And we thank you, Holy Spirit of truth, to guide us into all truth. And we call this time blessed and fruitful in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, our prayer team's verse is based on 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So we're going to be talking about... Um, this continuing, we've got repentance um, that that has part of that and also a blessing so that um, this verse here is, is a, not necessarily formula, but it's it's um it's it gives us the steps that we need strategy for having our land being healed as a nation, as well as this helps us as uh, is how to do this is the world and we're also going to be praying on prayers on behalf of all humanity so that we can have um, healing as we um, continue to move forward in this time so today now i have a teaching on the fruit of the holy spirit is spiritual warfare and this teaching is based on romans 12 21 in addition to the fruit of the holy spirit is also based on romans 12 21 do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good and right now at this time in our nation and in our world and um in in just creation overall there is a lot of evil that has been done a lot of crimes against humanity and we need to be able to focus on the nature and character of God 
the aspect that he has so that we can have the tools, the strategy, the nature and character of God, the hope and the courage to be able to address this time in history where there is a lot that's going on. There's a lot of uncertainty um, with things that are going on, things that, um, that it, it, it's, it's, there's a lot of unrest. And, um, but seeing and knowing and understanding what the Lord is doing, understanding the plan that is in place that is there that's going on with the military, with the um, 16 plus one um, communications that we've been receiving and um, understanding how President Trump and the military are working to uh, during the swamp. And we need to be able to continue to have faith in that, faith in God and the process. And we don't want to be overcome by evil. There's a lot that's going on. Uh, but we also want to make sure that we have the tools in place so that we can overcome evil with good. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, a little bit in this session about goodness and the justice of the Lord. And this evening, we're also going to be um, talking here from this verse. I just felt that we needed um, a really good word of encouragement with all that's been going on. And the verse that um, the Lord laid on my heart was from Psalm 27, verse 13. And it's, it is written, I would have lost heart unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So I just want to speak courage tonight when we think about goodness and what is goodness. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about goodness and how that works because we need to have um, courage of heart um, to believe that we will we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We're not waiting for the Lord to come and rapture us out of here. Um, we want to be the bride of Christ, the victorious church. And with that, we believe, I believe, um, that I am going to see, and I want to speak this over our nation and world and over humanity, that we can have the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living and that we are going to to see that actually see that here on earth so um what we're going to look at tonight is goodness and justice as spiritual warfare and goodness is one of the fruit of the holy spirit and i'm going to link how justice fits into that aspect Micah 6, 8, it is written, He has shown you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Now this word justly here, in Hebrew, that is the word for justice. And we can see from this verse that the Lord is showing us, He's giving us a definition of what is good. And if this is a definition of what is good, this has to do with his nature and character of what goodness is. And when we look at the fruit of the Holy Spirit, goodness is the one that aligns up with justice. And we have here, the Lord is requiring of us to do justice. What does that mean for us? That means that we need to be focusing on the justice and the justice process also of what our nation is going through and the information and the stuff coming out and to clean up this during the swamp. Also the justice against the crimes against humanity. And I want to show you another verse here that talks about the connection of justice with goodness. It's in Isaiah chapter one, verses 16 through 17. It is written, Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. Here the Lord is giving us another definition of good, and he says that we need to cease to do evil. Ceasing to do evil only brings us to a neutral middle ground. That is why it's important to overcome evil with good. That is why the Lord is here saying, learn to do good. Because if we only just stop doing evil, there is no momentum. There is no leverage. 
there is nothing that will be strong enough to counter the evil that's going on. So if we're seeing with the crimes against humanity and the various um, rituals that are being going on, and these are like at a negative, like thousand or probably more than that, but I'm just trying to give an idea. But if we just cease in our own lives um, of doing evil, then we're neutral. We have no authority, earned authority, spiritual authority. We have no moral authority. We do not have the goodness that is needed that we are doing to combat the evil. And what we're seeing right now is the evil is getting, it, it's being exposed because when you're in the process of draining the swamp, now this evil has been going on behind the scenes and it was, it's been awful. It's been horrific. Uh, a lot of people have known about it. Some have, some have not. And as this comes to light, it gets exposed. It's kind of, you know, just think too on, on just practical aspects of cleaning a wound. When you're cleaning a wound, it's going to hurt for a while, but it's got to be cleaned. If you're cleaning out a closet or the garage or something like that, it might be messy. You know it's messy. The process of cleaning it usually gets a little bit more messy, at least in my case, if I'm cleaning something out and I'm rearranging and pulling everything out, sorting what needs to be kept, what needs to be gotten rid of, what needs to be put into another location, etc. It gets messier before it gets better. And I just want to keep you encouraged that the reason that it's getting messy and it's to this level is because it's getting cleaned up. So keep keep focused on the Lord, keep focused on his goodness and his justice. Um, we need to learn to do good. We need to um, seek justice. That's part, again, here's another aspect of the Bible connecting goodness with justice. And the Lord says, learn to do good. So we need to learn that. Also, what is the good on this? Also with that is seeking justice. Um, we need to seek justice. We need to seek justice for those who have been committing all this injustice um, against the um, those who've been the recipients, um, those who are being on the receiving end of the crimes against humanity. So we need to do this. We also, the Bible says, to rebuke the oppressor. And that is what is going on with this process, is the oppressor needs to be rebuked. Um, also to defend the fatherless. All these children that have been trafficked that are in the dumbs and have been removed from their families or have been bred for this purpose for these um, rituals we need to defend them that is not an option when it comes to what the lord says on his goodness this is not a request from the lord these are commands cease to do evil learn to do good seek justice rebuke the oppressor defend the fatherless, and plead for the widow. These are not things that we get to pick and choose what we want to do. This is a command. This is the command from the God of all creation. And when we have this and we're doing this, this is what our focus needs to be also in general, but specifically during this time and this season um, of history with what is happening and the cleaning up and the draining of the swamp. Now, I want to read this in detail from Psalm 27, 13. I would have lost heart unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Sorry for the typo there. Um, this is, I'm going to read all of Psalm 27 so you can see this in the context of the scripture. And it's also very encouraging for where we are right now. So it is written in Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked come against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. 
For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me. O God of my salvation, when my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now it's important as we're waiting on the Lord and seeking his courage and his goodness and the justice. I want to talk about just briefly here what um, Nahum has written about God and his vengeance here. And it is written in Nahum chapter 1, verses 2 through 3. God is jealous and the Lord avenges. The Lord avenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. He reserves wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. So I just want to show us this to be an encouragement to, to keep the truth in front and before us that the Lord avenges his adversaries. And we are not gonna be doing the vengeance. We are doing the proper aspect of justice. We're not going to violence. We are taking things to the Lord in prayer. We are supporting President Trump We're in prayer. We're supporting the military in prayer. And we are supporting the rule of law. And there are aspects of going according to the rule of law that we can in our courts do with the justice, and when that happens, and if the person is um, with that process, it also gives the opportunity for that person to be brought before the Lord in his courts and for him to be taking care of this information or to be dealing with this injustice. And the Lord right here, when we talk about he is jealous and he avenges, and he takes vengeance on his adversaries. We've been talking about who these adversaries are, those that are, um, those that are, his adversaries are the false gods, Baal, Moloch. We've been talking about that. We've been talking about the Nephilim. And uh, we also know that God wants that all people, he does not want anyone to perish. Uh, he wants everyone to have eternal life. And so if there's anybody who is listening to this, who has been involved in these, the Lord, you know, you're, you can go to the Lord, you can repent and you can um, repent and ask for his salvation and through the blood of Yeshua, Jesus. And, um, and he can take care of that and um, give you a eternal life and not eternal death. Um, with this, um, the Lord, so, we see he will not, as it's written here, and the Lord will not at all acquit the wicked. The wicked are gonna have to take care of what they're doing. They are either going to need to repent and seek forgiveness for the Lord, or they're going to receive judgment. And that's just how the Lord works. And the process that we have that's going on is part of that. And we wanna just keep continuing to be encouraged keep focused, keep our mindset on the Lord, that he is a God of goodness and his goodness includes justice. And before, oops, sorry about that. It's getting a little bit ahead of me. Okay, now justice includes restoration and 
restitution. It's important with intercessory prayer and spiritual warfare to keep balanced in the midst of dealing with these deep issues. So we need to make sure that we're ministering to and caring for our spirit, soul, and body. It is written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who will also do it. I offer resources on treasures of glory for ministering to the human spirit, soul, and body. In ministering to the human spirit, I have spirit-to-spirit blessings, love, joy, peace, as part of the Fruit of the Holy Spirit, a spiritual warfare series. I also have a series of CDs on exceeding joy blessings. Resources that minister to the soul include the series of the Fruit of the Holy Spirit, a spiritual warfare. In addition, I also have the books on keeping covenant with the Lord and the seven mountains of culture. So covenant and religion, which is what these prayers are coming from, and also covenant and family. I also have resources with Treasured Wellness 365 consultations that minister to the body. And so these work at the quantum level in the body for it to be able to release toxins and pathogens. And you can see from my testimonial video on how this has benefited me. I have links to these in the description box below. Thank you for supporting this prayer team through prayer and financial contributions. The link for contributions is in the description box below. And so when we're seeking justice, we're also going to have restoration, restitution that's part of the process. And um, I'm not going to go into a whole lot in depth of what that looks like, but I do want to just briefly describe Joseph's life. When Joseph was um, accused of being inappropriate with Potiphar's wife, um, Joseph was put into jail. He was put in there unjustly. Now, the process of him being in jail, in prison, did allow for the Lord to work in Joseph's life in ways that he would not have been able to have done otherwise. And the, the time that Joseph was in prison needed to be at such a level was so that there would be enough aspect of the injustice done against him that the enemy overplayed his hand so that when the time came for God to give restoration, justice, restoration, and restitution for what Joseph, what happened against Joseph would place Joseph in a position to where he was second in Egypt to Pharaoh which also put him in a position of saving his family and, and the nation later known as Israel, um, but the Hebrew children. And what's happening right now with, with what's going on with the crimes against humanity and the justice that is coming, we want to keep focused on the goodness of the Lord, and we also want to keep focused on restoration and restitution. What happens with restoration? Restoration gives back what was stolen. Restitution is for the pain and suffering. And there is going to be an, a, an aspect of justice because of the level of injustice of the crimes against humanity that have been going on. There is going to be such a level of justice, restoration, and restitution that is going to be beyond the likes of anything that we have ever seen. And remember, when the Israelites left, well, they weren't the Israelites at the time, but when the Hebrew children left Egypt, the Egyptians, they asked the Egyptians for their gold, and the Egyptians just gave them all the gold, all these um, changes of clothing, and um, a lot of things. And if the Lord is going to do that in the aspect of the 400 years, the 400 some years of suffering that the um, Hebrew children went through in Egypt in slavery there, how much more is he going to be doing that for the amount of the injustice and the crimes against humanity that is going on our world and off world 
and in um, other areas of all creation with the humanity um, being enslaved in all over. So we're coming up into an absolute amazing um, area, time of our lives, of the justice of the Lord. Uh, keep being strong, keep being focused on Him. And I want to tie, I want, I want the, the background that I have on these slides for this, this video, this call, is very specific and purposed. And it is, um, it, it, it ha it's Jasper on the back. And there are many places in the book and the Bible that refer to Jasper. And Jasper is at the very first level of the, um, of the New Jerusalem. Of, there are 12 foundations. Jasper is the first one. There's also other connections of Jasper. And I um, want to refer here to this verse. Wait a minute, let me check something. Did I miss something in my notes? No, okay. Um, this verse here from Revelation 4, 3, it's, it, it says, and the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Ruby. And so I wanna read Revelation chapter four. So it is written, after this I looked and there before me was a door standing open in heaven and the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit and there before me was a throne in heaven and someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also in the front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures and they were covered with eyes in front and back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had the face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the Lord and say, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. So I'm gonna close us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. We praise you and thank you that you are almighty and the Lord of the armies of angels. We thank you for the covenant that you have made with us. And we know that this is available to us through the death and resurrection of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. We have access to all the provisions of the covenant. And we thank you that the blood of Jesus atones for all our sins, rebellion, and iniquity. We recognize that we have sinned by not fully understanding your goodness and justice and how these operate. We have not been living fully from your goodness and justice, neither have we been operating according to your justice and goodness and the fullness of what we are to be doing on behalf of others. As members of the royal priesthood, we take responsibility for and repent on behalf of ourselves, our generations, our nation, and for humanity and all creation for not seeking your goodness and justice to the fullest extent of what is available in our lives, as well as for those who have been and are currently being subjected to crimes against humanity. When we fail to see justice that you are bringing about, Father, we are not part of the solution, but continue to be part of the problem. We repent of this and ask for your forgiveness. We also renounce agreement with injustice and we choose not to turn a blind eye to what is going on. 
We do not agree with and renounce the injustice of the child, S-A-C-R-I-F-I-C-E-S-S, and all evil rituals that are performed in worship to false gods. We repent on behalf of ourselves, our generations, our nation, and all humanity for turning a blind eye to the worship of these false gods and allowing this injustice to continue as long as it has. We declare that you are the only one true God. We choose to embrace goodness and justice that comes from you. It is written in Matthew 18, 18, is spoken by Yeshua Jesus. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We bind the injustice that includes allowing these crimes against humanity to continue. We loose the goodness and justice of the one true God. We speak goodness, justice, life, and protection over our children. Father, please protect President Trump, the military, and all those who are involved in stopping the worship of these false gods and the injustice that uh, goes along with this. And we pray for those who are working to rescue our children in our world and beyond. It is written in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. We lose the spirit of peace, a spirit of love, the spirit of truth, the spirit of power, and the spirit of a sound mind over our nation, world, and all humanity. Please fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. Please wash us with the water from the river of life that comes from your throne. We pray that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And please guide us into a light that we may be about your work here on earth. Please arm us with strength to live out the fullness of who you created us to be in you. Please give us eyes to see and ears to hear. We thank you that in you we are more than conquerors. We thank you for the victory. We pray this in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach and the name of Jesus. Amen. Now I'd like to close us in a blessing. Okay. Beloved, I call your spirit to attention. Your heavenly father created you with a sensitivity and need for justice, as well as the ability to learn to do good and to do justly. The level at which you seek justice and perceive it is often due perhaps to your experiences with how justice was or was not carried out in your life. Nevertheless, you are created to live justly and to receive God's justice and to be able to promote his justice as well. Beloved, hear the word of the Lord for you. It is written in Psalm chapter 27, verse 13. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It is written in Micah 6, 8. He has shown you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Beloved, I bless you with the strength of heart to believe in the goodness of God's justice to be seen in your life while you live. Even though Micah answers the question for what is good for us to do, it is the definition of what is good. Since goodness is part of God's nature and character, what defines good for us is first revealed us to us in God through his son, Jesus Christ. We can only have goodness that originates from the Father. One aspect of God's goodness is his justice. And the Hebrew word used for justly in this passage in Micah includes the definition of justice. Therefore, justice is part of the nature of God. Beloved, I bless you to see God's justice in your life, for all the things the enemy has stolen from you, the things he has killed in your life, and the things that he has destroyed in your life. I bless you to seek justice for the lives of others, for the things the enemy has stolen from them, the things he has killed from them, and the things that he has destroyed in their lives. I bless you with hope and renewed confidence in anticipation of waiting upon the justice of God, rooted in his goodness, to bring about restoration and restitution for all the enemy has stolen, killed, and destroyed from your life and from your generations, as well as from the lives of those in the nation and world and across the universe and creation. I bless you to believe and know that the Lord will vindicate you and will vindicate against these crimes against humanity. Beloved, I encourage you to turn your face to the Father and to seek his justice. I invite you to ask the Father to reveal to you the things 
the enemy has stolen, killed, and destroyed in your life and in your generations. With this knowledge, I encourage you to present your case to the Lord as the righteous judge of the universe and as the ancient of days and ask for justice, restoration, and restitution. I encourage you to seek the Lord also as to how you are to be part of seeking justice for those who have been subjected to crimes against humanity. Beloved, I bless you with the strength of heart and hope to believe that you will see the goodness and justice of God in your life in the land of the living. I bless you in the name of Jesus and in the name of Yeshua. Okay, well, thank you for joining me this evening. And we have, um, thank you so much. Please click the subscribe button below, click on the bell or the area for get notifications. If you'd like notifications for future videos and that are released, please click the link below to sign up to receive our weekly prayer letter and other information about the prayer team. You can also click below to see other prayer team videos such as satanic ritual abuse, why you need to know about it, and the other areas for the videos on It's About the Children. Thank you so, not, so much and have a great evening and shalom. <laughs>